fact that they were put there to fight and end the occupation, not to look for ways that they could get favoritism from the occupation. And they did drop the ball. And in, that fa in the face of this, we should have built true institutions, institutions which were not based on the people, that even if they were arrested, that someone else... True institutions structural. when some of the population is facing 50% unemployment. Where in the world can you build true institutions with economics at that low level? You we, can't stabilize a state at that low level. We, of course we cannot stabilize the state, but we should have and we could have and we can build the foundations from the bottom up that are structurally sound, that can withstand this pressure. Akram Baka, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Now let me ask Hind Khoury, please, to speak mm -hmm. against the motion. Yes, I am against the motion. And I think there is no way Palestinians risk becoming their own worst enemies. They are reminded every single day, every single Palestinian is reminded every day who the enemy is. The enemy denies us a normal life. The enemy occupies the land. The enemy builds a wall that separates me from my parents and me from my work. The, the enemy assassinates people as it pleases. The enemy takes its land every day. I mean, how can we ever forget? I mean, who can tolerate a situation like Gaza? When we Gazans wake up every morning and they wonder why they don't have fresh water, they know it's the Israelis who imprison them in, who deny them electricity, who deny them the passage of goods and the passage of people. The same for us in the West Bank. 600 checkpoints that make our life impossible. We know we can't go collect our olives in season or trade our goods from one village to the other. We have several economies in the different cantons. Yes, I know that I live in a town where I am only considered a guest in Jerusalem. I don't have rights of being a citizen. I know that if my son goes out to study abroad, he may soon lose his right to come back to his own city and live with his own family. So how can we possibly forget who the enemy is? I also want to think, I think that this statement is a very dangerous statement because it shifts responsibilities. I mean, here you're telling me that the oppressed are to blame for the oppression. I mean, it's, it's just totally unacceptable. I mean, Israel is responsible, and now they're telling us, go and finish your business, and then we'll see if we can come up to, you know, conduct a peace process, or let alone relieve the international community from its responsibility to see that this project of theirs, I mean, this two-state solution is not our project, it's the project of the international community. Since 40 years, they told us they want to establish a Palestinian state, which is as legitimate as is Israel, yet we don't have it, and they are responsible, not us. All right, Hind Khoury, thank you very much indeed. You say that the oppressed are being held responsible for the oppression. The oppressed, the Palestinians, are being held responsible for the murder, kidnapping, summary executions, torture, and corruption that they practice on their own people and that you know perfectly well goes on in the Palestinian territories. By saying that it, Israel is the main enemy, you let people off their responsibility for actually doing something about the things no. that they inflict. You're saying these things are not being inflicted on the Palestinian people? No, no, I'm people? not saying we are a perfect community or a perfect No, but this leader. is not perfection. Not this is summary execution, Listen. torture, murder, flagrant abuse of human rights being carried out yes. by Palestinians in the Palestinian yes. territories. Yes. yes, you say. No, it, it, it ha this happens. I mean, we're normal and we're human beings. And but you're, asking, you're asking this audience to believe Listen. that the people, the Palestinians who Please. inflict those things on their own Listen. people are not I, even at risk know, of becoming their sorry, own worst enemy? I refuse, I refuse this suggestion that Palestine, there aren't good Palestinian leaders who are sitting there perfectly aware of the horrible injustice that is inflicted upon us, and they're not working to improve the situation. There are many, many good people out there. I'm talking there. about the Palestinian well, leaders who that. inflict yes, this themselves. Are, Listen, the factions are, of Fatah and are, Hamas who are, inflict this there themselves. There are some misgovernment, that's very true. We are not perfect, that's very true. You call we murder misgovernment? You call listen, murder misgovernment? There are, listen, there are cases, I'm sorry, there aren't really murders going on every day. There yes, are not. Listen, the conflict, internal conflict was horrible, unacceptable. Uh, the killing inside among Fatah and Hamas is totally unacceptable. It happened. But you know, the conditions we live in, I mean, we live a divide and rule policy. That, and that excuses that, it? No, it doesn't excuse it, but it explains it. And we need to, go, to get over And you don't think people who do that, listen, those things to their own people are their end, enemies? We are at the low end of the national struggle. But I'm sure these people who have resistance for ever so long will only overcome it. And we do have good people, I trust, will make the right decisions. Thank you very much indeed.
Now please let me ask Muntha Dajani to speak for the motion. Actually, I want to pick up where she left. It is for the first time the aggressor has become the victim and the victim has, has become the aggressor. Based on this, we have to reevaluate. We must have failed somewhere. It is my point of view that we have failed in building institutions. Building institutions, as they taught us in political science, actually leads to rule of law, absence of corruption, transparency, and accountability. The problem is, based on what I feel we failed to establish, it ushered in corruption. It ushered in nepotism. And this is very dangerous. We also, as leaders, never engage the Palestinian public nor the international community. Uh, most of the decisions were not studied well.